you paused, but you're not calling it a pause, and you're not calling it a skip. <laughs> so what are we calling it? Well, first of all, Sarah, thank you. <laughs> okay. And uh, Christine, thanks for hosting us here in, uh, in Sintra. So um, what we're calling it is maintaining the uh, level of the federal funds rate at its current level uh, for, the, <laughs> for this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we did that, if you, if you think about it, we've, we've raised uh, the federal funds rate by 500 basis points since a little more than a year ago. And we think, uh, so we've come a long way. We also think that there's more uh, tightening power coming through. Really, policy hasn't been restrictive for very long. We started at, at you know, negative real interest rates, and we've now moved up to where we actually are in restrictive territory. But we haven't been there very long. So we believe there's more restriction coming. And what's really driving it, uh, you know, to uh, Andrew's point and Christine's as well, is very strong labor market. We've got a labor market that, you know, where jobs are being created, there are strong wage gains, and that's driving spending, driving real incomes and driving spending, which is driving more demand and continuing to drive labor market. So the, the, the labor market is really, is really pulling the economy. And um, my colleagues and I, as you, as you will know, uh, wrote down in our SEP two more additional rate hikes. The median uh, uh, was quite a strong majority, actually wanted two or more rate hikes. <clears throat> and the reason for that was, if you look at the, the data over the last quarter, what you see is stronger than expected growth, uh, a tighter than expected labor market, and higher than expected inflation. So that tells us that although policy is restrictive, it's not, it may not be restrictive enough, and it, and it has not been restrictive for long enough. So I don't get why you didn't raise rates at the last meeting, especially I think it was a surprise that it was a unanimous decision to hold rates steady when you said a majority think that they still need to go farther on raising rates? It, it's really just um, as you get closer and closer to the goal. What, what we're aiming for is a, a stance of policy that's sufficiently restrictive to bring inflation down to 2% over time. As you get closer to that, you, you get closer to the place where the risks become more in balance. So, you know, we did four 75 basis point hikes in a row starting in June of last year. In December, we moved down to 50. Then we did three consecutive 25 basis point hikes. So this is really just a continuation. We're, we're going to move the, move the decisions a little bit, make them a little bit with a little bit more time in between them in an effort to get more information from the data to see how much restraint is really coming from these, you know, th through the pipeline from rate hikes that we only made now, in many cases, six, eight, nine months ago. So that's why we did it. So maybe in every other meeting hike. We've not decided that. So you know, we, we only th the only thing we decided was not to raise rates at the... June meeting. We have not made a decision to go to that. It may work out that way. It may not work out that way. But I wouldn't take, you know, moving a consecutive meetings off the table at all. I'm trying.